Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and in this video I want to explore the idea that the Xbox Series X could be the last Xbox console that Microsoft ever creates. Let's begin in the present day and later this month on the 23rd of July we will see the Xbox Games Showcase. This should be the show that Microsoft will use to show off the most amazing games ever seen and give you every reason you need to convince you to buy a shiny new Xbox Series X console. The reason why this needs to be the greatest video game show man has ever seen is because the future of Xbox as a console rides on this show. And to see why, let's rewind a bit. For over a decade now, Xbox has been falling further and further behind its main rival, PlayStation. In fact, it's been falling behind most of its life. The OG Xbox released during the Christmas holiday period of 2001, and during its four years as Microsoft's flagship console, it sold 24 million units, which for a newcomer to the console wars during the start of the millennium, and while PlayStation 2 was at a certain its dominant as the best-selling video game machine ever. Well, that's a good sales figure. It even beat Nintendo's flagship console at the time, the Nintendo GameCube, which only sold 21 million units. Then, during Christmas of 2005, Microsoft released the Xbox 360. The system enjoyed great sales numbers upon release, plus it helped that the PlayStation 3 wouldn't be out for an entire year after the 360. A year later, and the PlayStation 3 came out, and the launch was a disaster for Sony. Many of the games were rubbish and quite a few games played better on the 360 so sales for, for Sony were slow. Microsoft had the ultimate advantage handed to them on a silver plate. Their main rival was struggling and their console was selling gangbusters. So what did Microsoft do with this advantage? Did they double down on making great hardware and fantastic software? Nope, they spunked their advantage up the wall. First of all, the majority of their consoles self destructed. Then, Rare, who had made grade A masterpieces a few years before over on the Nintendo 64, now bought out by Microsoft, their games went from okay to what even is this, and then down to why did you even bother. Between 2005 and 2008, it's fair to say more Xbox 360s were being sold than PS3s, but by 2009, more PlayStations were being sold than Xboxes, and 11 years after, this difference has only grown larger and larger by the year. While Xbox exclusive games were just drying up, Sony were releasing hit after hit after hit. Back again at the present day and your average weekly sales look like this. Nintendo Switch is selling like hotcakes, PS4 is still selling very well for a 7 year old machine and Xbox One being totally crushed. Also take a closer look at those Xbox One sales, what do you notice about them? It's only really selling in America, outside of that one admittedly large country it's not doing anything, that's not a healthy sign, they've never sold any significant number of machines in Japan but they favour handheld gaming anyway but they've lost their footing entirely in Europe. The key problem Microsoft face is while that this mass exodus to other platforms is going on these users are buying into the ecosystems offered by Nintendo and to a much larger degree Sony. Many people these days buy games digitally so they've built up a vast library of games that are locked to the PlayStation network. All signs are pointing to the PlayStation 5 allowing digital PS4 games to just be transferred over to the new system. If you leave the PlayStation ecosystem, you lose those games. Of course you lost your games in the past if you sold your system, but at least those games still had value. You had the discs, you got more money for selling your old machine if you included 15 or so game discs with it. You can't sell digital games, those are tied to your account within the platform's ecosystem. So with many, many more people already in the PlayStation ecosystem, System. Thanks to the runaway success of the PlayStation 4, that's a lot of people tied up who might not want to leave the PlayStation only to go and see what Xbox has got. 
This all paints a pretty bleak picture for Xbox as a brand, but can Microsoft turn this around? Well, let's start with the Xbox Series X. First of all, the name sounds a bit too much like Xbox One X, which is the current Microsoft console, a console which is failing badly, and you would have thought they'd want to get away from that image, not release something that sounds like a continuation of it. Either way, the Series X is going to be a big upgrade in terms of power. However, multi-platform games tend to look the same across both Xbox and PlayStation, so don't expect to see a huge difference there. Then you have Microsoft's first party game games, and what they've chosen to do is something really stupid. All games Microsoft make for at least the next two years will work on both Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Wow! Really pro-consumer, right? You buy one disc and it works on both your current gen and next gen console. However, this means that all Microsoft games can't take full advantage of the power that of the new machine because they have to work on a system that is now seven years old as well. So don't expect to see games like what Sony are doing with Ratchet and Clank, where you can warp between worlds in seconds because of the super speed SSD storage available on the new PlayStation 5. You can't do stuff like that when your games have to work on a console from 2013. But the really dumb thing here is that Microsoft is nerfing and handcuffing their games to a system which isn't even selling well. If no one is buying an Xbox One, what is the point of this feature? You're purposefully making your games worse than they could be just so they can run on a system that no one wants anyway. What are you doing? But don't worry, Papa Phil Spencer is running Xbox now, he's got a great track record. Yeah, but does he? Sure, Xbox Game Pass is a great service, but what else? Well, there's backwards compatibility for Xbox One. After all this time, just 40 out of 1,000 games from the OG Xbox work. 566 of 2,085 games from the Xbox 360 work. What a success. Before Big Papa Phil was the head of the whole of Xbox, he was the head of Microsoft Game Studio. Good old Microsoft Game Studios. They pumped out endless Halo and Forza titles and very little else. I mean, let's be honest, Xbox has been known for having a very weak lineup of first party games, but maybe two watches filled will surprise us all. Seriously, now though, why does he wear two watches? What's up with that? Xbox is a brand in trouble. They have a dwindling user base and a rival who is on a seemingly endless hot streak. If Xbox continues to allow PlayStation to dominate the high-end console business for much longer, their market share will be so small, Microsoft investors will be asking serious questions about why they are even in the console business. Now we end up going full circle and we are back at the Xbox game showcase later this month. Microsoft isn't stupid. Phil Spencer isn't stupid. They know how they ended up in this mess and they saw how Sony dug themselves out of a similar hole with a PlayStation 3 launch disaster. Microsoft knows they need killer games and they know they have many IPs they can just pull out the bag to get gamers attention. Conquer, Fable, Project Gotham, Perfect Dark, Psychonauts, Amped, Banjo-Kazooie. Microsoft could revive some fan favourites as well as put out some brand new interesting titles titles to get back in the game. Part of me thinks that Microsoft have been plotting this for ages. They've been holding titles back from the Xbox One because they knew it was already dead and wanted to save the big guns for the next generation. This part of me thinks they're ready to fight back and earn back their market share that Sony has ripped away from them. The Xbox team is fighting for their very future and will pull out all the stops to make sure they don't lose this war. But another part of me thinks that the Xbox team is just totally inept. For a start, look at the time the show is on, 9am on a Thursday, when most Americans will be starting work, and over in Europe, a place which Microsoft needs to win back, it will be about 3 or 4 o'clock, and again, most people will still be at work, unlike Sony, who did their PlayStation 5 show at around 8pm UK time, so everyone in their prime territory could watch. The other problem with this Xbox show is that Microsoft 
has been drip feeding Series X information for months now. People already know the specs, they know what it looks like, and they even know some of the games. This show just won't have the same impact that the PlayStation 5 show did. Sony remained tight lipped the whole time and then just dropped a shed load of information all in one hit for maximum effect. Personally, I do think the Xbox Game Showcase will be a good event. Even though I'm not an Xbox guy, this truly is do or die now for the Xbox brand. If they mess this up, the lead Sony will take will be just something too much for Microsoft to come back from. So I think they will come out swinging here and with some really great stuff. Because if they don't, it's game over. Well, that's it. Other.